Great. Good afternoon, everyone. Conquer Myasthenia Gravis is pleased to bring you today's webinar called Meditative Breathing. We'd like to thank our sponsors. We'd also like to remind you that each person's experience is different, and this webinar is not a substitute for medical advice. The speakers you'll hear today have a depth of knowledge and experience with meditative breathing. First, you'll hear from Dr. Julie Rowan. She's board certified in neurology, neuromuscular medicine, integrative medicine, and acupuncture, and she has additional training in yoga. And then Dr. Rowan will introduce you to our second speaker, yoga instructor Jill Crockett. We're grateful to both of you. Please go ahead. Thank you, Joan. I'm so excited to be here because I love this important topic. Uh, let me start by asking the audience, did you ever catch yourself holding your breath during a stressful situation? Or did you ever notice uh, the relaxing and focusing benefits of taking a deep breath? What we're going to show you today is going to increase your understanding of that concept. Uh, today we're talking to myasthenia gravis patients. Myasthenia gravis is an autoimmune condition that can be exacerbated by stress and can involve breathing weakness. So an important point is if you're having significant shortness of breath, particularly shortness of breath at rest, do not do these exercises and talk to your neurologist. These meditative breathing techniques are going to demonstrate today. Um, they're going to help you to calm the mind, balance stress hormones, and may even help to improve lung capacity. So I'm really happy to have here with us Jill Crockett. She is yoga studio owner of Mokenta Yoga in Downers Grove. She is a yoga teacher and expert in mindfulness. And we're going to talk to Jill today about meditative breathing. Welcome, Jill. I'm so happy you're here. Thank you. I'm very happy to be here. So can you tell us what exactly are meditative breathing exercises? Yes, in its um, simplest form, it's not so simple, but it's being aware of your breathing as it is focusing your awareness and attention on the breath without doing anything to change it. Um, this is often used as a tool to focus the mind during meditation practices. Um, however, we can also intentionally change the pattern of breath to create a desired physiological, mental, emotional, and even spiritual changes, um, continuing to be mindful even as the breathing pattern is altered. And we'll talk more specifically about what those changes in breathing pattern are. So that's a, a basic understanding of meditative breathing, being aware of it. Okay, so I think um, I get this question that uh, people with myasthenia are, are often even mildly short of breath. Uh, they're outside the danger zone of crisis but they still have a feeling of shallowness um, and it's associated with an anxious or panicky component um, because naturally panicky feelings are hardwired together with shortness of breath. So, um, but there's a calming benefit to the practice, this type of breathing, correct? There is, and um, the video will address this specifically. It's called three part breath. So. Uh, using that mindful breathing, just being aware of the breath, um, to deepen it, to take it from a shallow breath, moving uh, into a more of a belly breathing. Um, it takes practice like anything, but it can have almost immediate benefit if we can get there. If Having said that, um, if we think of anxiety from a, on a scale from 1 to 10, 10 being panic attack, feels like you're going to have a heart attack and die, 1 being obviously no anxiety, um, we might not necessarily want to try to sit down and focus on our, our breathing if we're in an eight, nine, or 10 level. It, um, you could try it, there's no harm in doing so, but you might find that it's very frustrating. You're just not gonna be able to, to manage your, your state in, um, at that level of anxiety. But if we're in a heightened state of anxiety, but not in full panic mode, um, this could be a great tool to further reduce the symptoms of anxiety uh, to make it more manageable. We need lots of tools, as I say, in our toolbox to manage um, our feelings and um, anxiety, depression, but um, certainly this could be a very helpful tool to have 
um, at your disposal. So um, shortness of breath without accompanying feelings of anxiety, although it could lead to that, um, simply focusing on belly breathing. As I said, the video will get into that in more detail. Um, but if it is accompanied with moderate to mild level of anxiety, um, the same technique can help reduce the that those symptoms as well. And then we also get into that loop, right? If we're in pain, our anxiety increases. And the increased anxiety can exacerbate the sensation of pain. So these techniques can also help to interrupt that cycle. Um, certainly no technique is 100%, but it's nice to have something to try and can be very effective. Um, yeah, if I can, oh, go ahead. No, I'm finished, go ahead. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share my experience with it because I definitely feel that it can help anxiety. And I think so many people right now, especially with everything going on, need this. Um, it's super effective and super important thing that's basic to learn to help control your anxiety. I know when I started um, to learn meditative breathing, um, I started doing it in a yoga class and I noticed the relaxing benefit and I was like, wow, like I never felt this relaxed. So um, the relaxation is what hooked me in. But then I started to use it as a tool outside of yoga class, for example, at work, before a meeting or presentation, sometimes in the elevator, anywhere um, that I had a short break, you know, to counteract the stress. It was really my introduction to mindfulness. And eventually I came to realize that if I could control my breath, um, then I have better control over my mind. Uh, these techniques really changed my life by showing me that it was actually my mind that was often creating the stress and anxiety. So I'm a huge proponent of mindfulness to, uh, to benefit anyone, but in particular, anyone on the path to optimal wellness. So could you um, talk a little bit about how you would suggest using this practice? It could be used in conjunction with a meditation practice, and, and, and um, certainly would recommend that. Um, as you said, it's, it's, a, it's a great tool to um, slow down the thinking mind, which is the idea of meditation, to slow down the thoughts, that monkey mind that we all live with all the time, particularly now, right? Um, and once we are able to sit with ourselves and start to become aware of our thinking, we become an observer and a detached observer of our thinking mind. And when we do that, we're able to detach, ideally, and become aware that all of these things are transient. They come and go, even if we don't want them to. Our thoughts change, our, our physical self changes, our emotions change. Um, and once we realize that these things are impermanent, we can start to detach from them. And when we do that with enough practice, hopefully we can start to identify less with them. I am not that. I am not just my body. I am not just my thoughts. I am not just my emotions. Um, that in fact, that um, my true self can be something greater than that, beyond that. Those transient, impermanent things. Um, so in that way, it is continuing on that path of optimal wellness, self-realization that so many people are interested in, living their best life, being their best self, right? And not be so at the mercy of our brain, of our thoughts, right? So often we feel like we have no control. Uh, well, that's not true necessarily. We can teach the mind. We can learn to uh, control the thoughts, control the body, and uh, but in order to do that, we need to become a detached observer of it. So it's a long journey, but it's interesting. You uh, really get to know yourself and and study how your mind operates. Yeah, it's a. I mean, it's really a profound practice. Um, so we have a video that you did for us demonstrating meditative breathing. Um, so we can watch the video and we can practice along with you. Is there anything you wanna say before 
we watch the video? Um, like anything, it takes practice. If you start to feel, oh dear, anxious, <laughs> um, you know, lightheaded, dizzy, stop. You can always jump back in. Um, I would suggest doing this in a seated position. You know, I think I've, um, not sure where the video starts, but I address, you know, finding your, your seat beforehand. Um, and just give it a go. You'll see for yourself if it works for you. Um, and you might notice that it, it works very quickly. Such a simple thing. Altering the flow of breath can be very powerful. So. Great. Uh, let me just say one thing, because again, I'm not sure, um, and this was brought up as a, a question, uh, what if my nose is stuffy? Because I teach it through no, nose, nose breathing only. By all means, open your mouth. That's fine too. Um, feel free during the practice, if you need to blow your nose, you know, take care of yourself. Um, this is supposed to be relaxing. So that's all. Okay, great. Let's watch the video. Let's go ahead and get started. So if you are in a seated position, you want your feet flat on the floor, right? And if you're lying down, that's fine. And we're gonna put one hand on our belly and one hand on our chest. I encourage you to close your eyes. This will help you really tune in and focus on the sensation. Um, and again, we're breathing in and out through the nose, soften the face. And we're going to start by breathing into the belly. This is the three part breath I mentioned. So we're inhaling, feel the belly rise. Continue that inhalation, feel the chest lift. And then we're breathing all the way up into the collarbones. So now we're into the tops of the lungs. And then we reverse that process. Begin that exhale, preferably through the nose, feel the chest lower diaphragm lift and the belly draw in All right and we're going to continue that we'll do that 10 more times so just focusing on the breath inhale feel the belly rise feel the chest lift all the way to the collarbones and then exhale reverse that process chest lowers belly draws in. All right, keep going. Inhale, feel the belly expand. Chest open all the way to the collarbones. And exhale, chest lowers, diaphragm lifts, belly draws in. One more time like that, inhale. Tune into that sensation, you can feel all three parts happening. Good, and then just come back to your normal rhythm and tune in. How did that feel in the body and the mind? If you found that you've created some anxiety, right? Or like I can't get a deep, I can't breathe, a little claustrophobic feeling, keep practicing that. It, it is a technique that takes practice and you get better as you do it. Um, and you can go back to that. If you found that it created a sense of relaxation and calm, perfect. You're on your way. So we can expand on that technique. I'm going to show you one more tool to have in your toolbox, right, to get that full, complete breath. Um, and add an element of mindfulness. Now here we're bringing in a meditative quality to this practice simply meaning that we're using a tool to focus the mind, uh, quiet the thoughts, and bring the mind and body into a more relaxed state, right? 
and we could all benefit from that. So again, relax everything. I encourage you to close your eyes. And we're gonna use that three-part breath in and out through the nose. We're gonna inhale, starting in the belly, and we're gonna count this time. So we're gonna stick with a four count inhale. We're gonna pause at the peak of the inhalation just a second, feeling that fullness of breath. And then we're gonna exhale for four counts. So what's important here is to keep the inhale and exhale of equal length, the breath smooth and controlled. If you start to feel anxious or uncomfortable, short of breath, stop. You can always jump back in, try again, or come back to it later. All right, so with the eyes closed, feet fat, flat on the floor or lying down, we're going to inhale into the belly. One, two, three, four, to the tops of the lungs, hold your inhalation. And then exhale, one, two, three, four, pause. Repeat, inhale. Pause just a second at the peak of your inhalation, and then exhale. One, two, three, four. And we're going to keep going like that, closing the eyes if you can. Inhale. All the way into the tops of the lungs. Pause and exhale. One, two, three, four. Again, inhale, one, two, three, four, and pause. Exhale, one, two, three, four, and pause. Continue. If you were to be practicing this with the mouth open, it would look like this. So by pursing the lips, we have more control over the breath. Basically, we're slowing it down. So as we move along in this practice and we increase our lung capacity, you might find that uh, you want to increase the length of the breath. That's great. Um, you can increase the counts with it, right? So then maybe you were going to a five count inhale and exhale, six count and so on. As long, that's fine as long as the breath feels controlled, smooth, inhale and exhale of equal length and it doesn't, um, create any disturbance in the mind and body. We want to um, not overstimulate the nervous system, right? By creating anxiety, we're trying to calm everything down. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, if you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer them. And thanks very much. That was great. Thank you so much. <laughs> I feel so relaxed. Um, I know. I, I feel so. <laughs> we did get some questions. Um, again, okay, so we might have gone over this, but I'll just go through the questions to make sure it's clear. Um, so okay. if someone feels their breath is shallow, um, Again, I want to say this is not the way to treat acute shortness of breath, but sometimes people who are out of danger of crisis still feel their breath is shallow and it can be a big problem for them. So which technique would you um, say would help this, Jill? Sure. Well, it's amazing. We walk around just through the course of our lives, right, going about our business, breathing into the tops of the lungs or um, upper chest, right? Um, and it's great to become aware that you're doing that because we want to have a full deep breath um, for many reasons. And I would go back to that three part breath. You can do it anywhere. You can do it in the car, right? In line at the grocery store, whatever, wherever you're at. If you're in a particularly stressful situation or just going through your day, um, 
going back to that three part breath, you know, feeling the belly rise. You don't have to close your eyes, obviously. Just tune into it, um, become aware of it. And oftentimes that awareness um, in and of itself will um, allow you to breathe deeper. But again, it does take practice. Yeah, just getting back to that shallow breath, that's um, living with a shallow breath, I mean, does increase your blood pressure and your heart rate. Um, and it is associated with that anxiety. So the more that you can get that deep belly breath and that awareness, it's just good for your overall health. Um, so we have another question that said, uh, would this be a good strategy for someone who's tried breathing exercises in the past, but felt very tired afterwards? Um, <clears throat> Yes, I, I don't think there's counterindicated um, as long as you have the capacity to get that deep breath and there's nothing physiologically preventing that. Um, I'm curious about that feeling tired afterwards. I wonder if it's feeling relaxed um, and that feels like tired. I don't know. Um, it could be that you've let go of all the stress from the body and you're just sort of feeling depleted as well. Um, and I would make sure that your inhale and exhale is of equal length, right? If you're, um, yeah, I would be very careful about that. You want to make sure that you're filling the lungs completely and exhaling completely and give it another try. Otherwise, it, we'd have to talk more specifically about what's happening and um, fine tune it. But I think it would it's worth another effort for sure. Yeah, that's a good Try point. Bring... Sometimes you're, you are over fatigued and then you get to the point of relaxation and then you know you're tired, you need to sleep. Right. You know, it yeah. kind of happens when you start meditation too, like a lot of people will just start falling asleep in the beginning you know, probably because they need to sleep. Um, exactly. Another question, yeah. Another question I have is if carrying excess weight on your belly can impede your ability to breathe effectively. And yeah, the short answer is yes. This is often a problem uh, with patients to try to determine if it's the MG that's causing shortness of breath or if it's the extra weight. Um, because it's kind of like when you're pregnant and you have the baby pushing up on your diaphragm, if there's extra weight there, it also can be inhibiting the diaphragm from fully expanding. So of course that can lead to shortness of breath and fatigue. So it sometimes gets jumbled, which how much is MG and how much is the weight. Um, so this is a question for Jill. Is there a particular time of day that is better than another to perform meditative breathing exercises and how long should a breathing practice be? That's a good question. Um, I would say, ideally, morning and or evening. In the morning, we, uh, like just out of bed, before you get started with your day, we have, um, we're not so caught up in our, our thoughts yet and our to-do list. So I think that's a good time. It sort of sets the tone for the day, puts you in a good frame of mind to uh, continue on with the rest of your day and what the day is in store. And then also at night, it's a great way to decompress, to wind down, to slow things down and prepare yourself for sleep. Particularly if you're somebody who has trouble falling asleep, um, uh, particularly um, a lot of people have a heightened anxiety when they lay down to go to bed, right? Then the starts, thoughts start going or they're just so keyed up from the day that they have trouble relaxing. So this could be a great uh, tool to help you just prepare for sleep. Um, in terms of length of time, I would set reasonable goals for yourself. So start, set a timer even, um, so you don't have to keep peeking at the clock, right? So two minutes, start with two minutes, see how you go. You can, and then over time, gradually increase it. Um, until, you know, as long as you'd like, as long as it feels good to you, uh, explore it. What does it feel like to do in your body and mind to practice this 
15 minutes, 20 minutes, you know. Um, now that would, I would say, would be somebody with a more, you know, who's been at this a while, more advanced practice, but, you know, so start with two minutes, see how you go, experiment, see for yourself. Yeah, I'm really glad that you addressed that about sleeping, because if that can help people sleep, that that's really important to know. Um, I have another question. Can you hurt your lungs if you take breathing to the extreme? Um, what happens, you know, since the deep breathing alters your heart rate and blood pressure. You can drop your blood pressure and you can pass out. That's what can happen if you do it to the extreme. And some people do advocate that, but that's not what we're advocating here. We're advocating a slow, a slow mindful, meditative breath. So then you shouldn't, shouldn't be any adverse side effects at all. Right. You don't want to fill the lungs to the point where it feels like you're going to burst. It should be a comfortable sensation of fullness. Whatever that means to you, that's different for everybody. And that will change over time, hopefully. Mm -hmm. um, so I have someone uh, requesting to go over basic meditation techniques, and that would be great to go over for someone who wants to take it a bit further. Oh, that's um, that would be wonderful. And it's sort of an, an, a natural evolution. You may find if you sit down to uh, do particularly the in counting, inhale and exhale, that if you sit there long enough, the counting kind of drops away, could drop away, and you're just left with awareness of breath. And you're in a very relaxed, meditative state. And that's wonderful. What a great place to end up. Um, so don't feel like you have done anything wrong. That could be a goal, actually. Um, and so if we're doing uh, pra practicing meditation and we're using meditative breathing, you could use that counting technique. Absolutely, it's a great preparation for meditation. Or you could simply um, maintain your awareness of the sensation of breath as it occurs naturally. So regardless of how you're breathing, you want to find a comfortable um, spot and anywhere, it could be outside in your house. Ideally sitting up, particularly if you're new at meditation. Um, I know for me, if I lay down, I'm more than likely gonna fall asleep. So I practice sitting up. You can sit in a chair, a couch, sit up in your bed, someplace that feels relaxing and calm. Try to minimize the distraction around you, uh, particularly when you're first learning. Um, I would have the back supported, otherwise you're going to get fatigued, right? So don't think you have to sit in the middle of the room. You can sit against a wall or in a chair, as I said. Feet flat on the floor, so you want to feel grounded. Palms or arms relaxed alongside the body. And then um, to keep it simple, I would close the eyes. Um, that minimizes the distractions. So we're not looking around at you know, things in the room. We're keeping the awareness as internal as possible. And then once you've established your comfortable seat, you're gonna do your very best to be still. Again, minimizing the awareness outside of self. So our eyes are closed, we've stilled the body, resisting the temptation to move and fidget around. Be still. Bring your awareness to the sensation of breath and just observe it. Uh, maybe even the sensation of the inhale and exhale on the upper lip or the chest lowering and rising. And when we first begin our meditation practice, you'll be bombarded by thoughts. Absolutely. It's just part of having a thinking mind. So the thoughts and distractions will come. And this is where the work comes in. We're we're working toward mindfulness, we're working toward a meditative state. So as we get distracted by those thoughts, we acknowledge it, oh, I'm thinking about the laundry again. And then we redirect our awareness back to the sensation of breath. And that is gonna happen over and over again. I've been meditating for many years, and still, when I sit down to meditate, more often than not, I spend the good five to 10 minutes before I remember I'm supposed to be meditating, right? But if we're still long enough, 
um, we are practicing our um, meditative breathing, so we're just focusing our awareness, the thoughts will start to calm down all by themselves, just by being still and focusing on the breath. Don't be discouraged if it doesn't happen right away. As I said, give yourself either enough time per session or enough practice over time for that to happen. People spend their lives practicing meditation, trying to create a meditative state. So any effort is better than no effort, right? Even if you sit for five minutes and the thoughts just rapid fire and never stop, you've still made an attempt to quiet the mind and there's benefit in that effort, being still, focusing your awareness, being a witness to your thoughts, being a witness to that monkey mind as they call it, right? Um, again, best if it's done in the morning, in the evening, um, same time of day is best, so you sort of, and same location. So you become, you start to associate that chair with a calm state. It just makes it easier for you to get there the next time. Um, also, if you are somebody, and there are many people like this, that just have a hard time sitting still and with themselves and um, feel like they're crawling out of their skin maybe a little bit. And there are so many tools now to help us. Um, Two of the most popular ones are Calm, C-A-L-M, is an app you can download, and uh, Headspace is another one that a lot of people use. I think you can find those both in Apple Store. Just Google it. Um, there's also a million guided meditations out there for you to download. A lot of them are free. Shop around, find one that works for you, a voice that's pleasing, and get a little library for yourself so you can alternate them. Um, and a lot of people use those at night to help prepare for sleep as well and get themselves ready. So yeah, there's oh, it's wonderful to see you know um, so many options and tools at our disposal to help people establish and maintain a meditation practice. So I hope that answered. Did I skip anything? I hope that I answered your question. No, that was great. I just, I just want to say, you know, if people think that if they don't see the worth in it, like what would you say to them? Because it kind of seems like, wow, I'm just wasting my time. My mind's racing. I can't meditate. You know, this is what I hear all the time. I can't meditate. You know, right. <laughs> because the mind's racing because we're bombarded all day with all this external noise but mm. the path is so worth it, right? I mean, you'll notice a change in your life, your relationships, your decisions, yeah. Giving yourself space, space in your mind um, to bring something else in, right? Um, I would say, well, of course the mind is going. It's not been taught to do otherwise. <laughs> and it, it is so hard to be still with ourselves and our own brain, our own thought. It's not easy by any means. Make reasonable goals for yourself. Can you sit and be still and focus on the breath for two minutes? Two minutes, set the timer so you don't even have to think about it. Um, and gradually over time, it will get easier. So don't give up. Um, you will see the benefits. Um, I remember, um, even in my thinking, um, when I was uh, studying many years ago, um, I would I was reading very dense, um, not pleasure reading. This was um, a text that was very complex, and I would read it and read it and have a hard time, you know, absorbing it. And one day I sat for med. I'm not going to meditate, so I sat for meditation. And when I picked up the book right afterward, it just was so much easier. I just created space in my mind to be able to absorb something else. Um, so there, so aside from a, you know, a esoteric or spiritual component, there are very practical real world benefits to having a meditation practice. Um, so don't give up. Um, absolutely. And the thoughts will go and some days are going to be better than others, particularly in times of stress. You know, it's going to be hard to sit with ourselves and be still and quiet the mind. Um, don't think of 
the goal as not thinking. That's a mistake that a lot of people have. Well, meditation is not thinking. That's not a, that's a master yogi. That's not a reasonable expectation for a, certainly a beginner ex, uh, meditation practice. We're just slowing down the thoughts, calming down the mind. Thank you. No, that's great. I mean, two minutes, that's good advice for someone who's starting because who, who doesn't have two minutes? Right. That doesn't leave you with much of an excuse. Right. Exactly. Um, so I have one other question. Last question, I think. I always thought you inhale through the nose and exhale out the mouth. The video appeared to show inhale and exhale through the nose. What is the difference mm -hmm. and what is the better approach? Well, I'm coming at this from a yoga perspective. So traditionally, that is um, in and out through the nose. And there's a lot of philosophy behind that. Um, if you're looking at it um, from a mental health perspective, I know they tell you to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth. And that's fine. Um, maybe that works better for you. I don't know that. Um, from a practical perspective, there's that's necessarily one is better than the other. Um, I think there is um, more. We're getting into it, the energetic body when we talk about moving the breath through the nose rather than the mouth. Um, when we open the mouth and exhale, we're we're um, moving energy out of the body rather than harnessing it and keeping it internal and moving it in and through the body. Um, but I don't think it's wrong to breathe out of the mouth. And sometimes you just may have to because the nose, the nasal passages are clogged. Um, so it's a different perspective. It's a different way of coming at it. The effects are similar. I think if we're using it for a more meditative technique, we'll keep the mouth closed. Do you have anything to add to that? I don't know that there's necessarily no, think, a huge benefit. I think that that's great. Um, yeah, so I think that we're almost out of time, but I, do you, is there anything else you want to talk about? Anything you think we skipped over? Um, I would say give it a try. Try it yourself. See how it feels. And it's always about that. How does it feel? Do you feel better after you do it? Great. Keep going, right? Um, if it, yeah, I don't know about it. Give it a couple of tries. Uh, refine the technique. I'm certainly here to answer any questions. If anybody um, has anything further that you know they think of later, I'm always available. But yeah, I think the the proof is in the doing. It's very experiential. So yeah, I'm very yeah. happy to be here and your time. It was, I'm so happy that we had this conversation. That was really great. Thanks so much for coming. You're welcome. My pleasure.